Talk with Trisha. Hello viewers, welcome to Talk with Trisha. I am Trisha. On this episode, we're going to meet a young man who, in spite of his disability, did not end up crying, wishing, or daydreaming, but he braced up. He did not just go to school, but graduated and served the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Join me as we meet Chijoke Njoku. I know you as Chijoke, but yes. would like the viewers to know you, would like other people to know you. Who is Mr. Chijoke? I am Chijoke. Holy News in Joko. Um, the guy you are seeing uh, was born in the year 1991, 24th June 1991, to the family of Mr. Polinus in Joko. In Ugogo Mbalezi, in Oma Isu, on the local government area of Ebony State in Nigeria. So, how many are you in your family? Child, child, or... We are six in number. We are three boys, three girls. Wonderful. So how has it been for you with your disability? How has life been? How has life been for you? Yes, let me start from telling you how this came. I was born like this. I was born like this and I was born in a hospital. So according to the story that my mom told me, so she told me that um, she didn't even know that I had uh, this problem of one leg being shorter than the other one. So that it was my father who one day asked her, maybe after I was born, maybe after two days after I was born, and my father asked her, have you been able to check your son, to check all parts of his body, if they're all okay? Then my mother said yes, that I've counted, that she has counted my fingers, that they are all Five, five in number. That everything that she has checked that I am complete. So my dad then told her, "Have you been able to check his both legs? Also to know if they are also they are all in length." Then my mom said, "Yes, I used to like stretch his legs." So my mom, my dad now told he told her to go and check again. Then when my mom got to bed where I was, she, she now stretched my both legs to find out that. One was shorter than the other, so which is this very leg, which is shorter than this one. So my mother then threw me over and began crying. So where the thing came from, I don't really know. I can't really. So does that mean even at the hospital today? Because I know that in situations like that, the mother is supposed to be told, okay, this is this is what we talk about the child. I have not been able to ask. I said, mistake that I've made so far. But I suspect that they consider the father, my mom, is a woman. Uh, so maybe they choose to tell my dad, who is a man, who has that heart, that strong heart. So they told my mom, my dad, and they didn't tell my mom. That's what I, I think happened. Okay, so tell us a bit about your family. Yes, my both parents are still. They are still alive, so they are still alive and healthy. Uh, I was not born into a rich uh, both rich family. So my dad was one of those uh, works that that uh, uh, he used to do. He was pushing value like truck, and uh, also he was once time a driver before he had an accident. That almost that they almost caught one of his legs, but they later did. Uh, I think he scored and came back. So after that one, my father was not able to, to go back into that uh, driving uh, driving uh, uh, walk again. So he was pushing barrel, and my mom was also assisting him. Before he now joined, um, goes into house building, building of house nursing. He was serving, and then he would be paid at the end of the day. This, these were the things that my parents were doing to, to, uh, uh, to feed us in the house. So, and then at a point when I grew 
up. I have not forgotten that there was a time I was working with my bootlegs. Then as I was, as I kept growing, this one seems to be, to be uh, maybe being able to, um, to accept nutrients than this. And so this uh, uh, kept retorting and this one kept growing. So that exactly was what happened. And then it got to the, to the stage when I could not be able to walk with the bootlegs again. Then I started picking stick to support myself. Mm. When I pick the stick, they will collect it from me, throw it away. Then I will still go find another one. At a point they saw that it is not what they could uh, stop. So they allowed me. I began using a stick. Like I was saying, I was not born into a rich home. I, I have not forgotten that it got to a stage when I learned how to mend shoes. So I used to go from house to house with my box. At what then I, I think I should be I should be 10 years, 11, 12 years then. I was still in primary school. I used to go from house to house to help mend shoes for people and they would repair me. Then at a point I began selling kerosene. I used to also go from house to house to sell kerosene to people then. Yes, I was doing it myself in my in my, my village. Yes, I am the only one with disability. So, has there been any? Was there any inferior treatment at home? Is there any way they did they treat you different from the other children, the other of your siblings? No, my, my parents. Even when I when any time I mess up, they used to beat me like mercilessly, like they do treat uh, no, no every other person. Yes, yeah, no discrimination. And my siblings they did not treat me bad. They took care of me very much. My parents also took care of me. But the only thing is that they did not pamper me as. Like because of considering my the fact that I am I have this uh, one level disability, no nothing like that. Once I do anything bad, they will flog me like the same. If if my elder brother who is touch should be given three strokes of cane for this kind of thing that he has done, if I should do the same thing, the same three strokes of cane will be given to me. Tell us about your educational background. Yes, I attended nursery school, uh, one private nursery school. So, not last month, then it got that in India, our neighboring village. So I also attended a primary school. There's a few people primary school, it's a community primary school in Conchalco Community in the state. So I attended primary school. I finished my primary education in the year 2005. That was the time I finished my primary education. How about your secondary education? Yes, I didn't. Um, my dad, due to the fact that he, he, he intended taking me to a, a high, high a, that school that has, a, that has high quality, mm -hmm. maybe a school that, that is like better private. than the private, private school that is better than every other school in our area. So after my primary school, my dad had no money to, to put me in such a kind of school. So I wasted my first day being at school. I was so supportive during that period because I used to go fishing. I would go fishing. I would make. I would catch fish to cook and then um, uh, bamboo, small, small stick of bamboo. Uh, I, yes, uh, yes. I used to use it. To and during all these times, you never even felt like, oh, I'm disabled or anything. I should. No, I swim very well. I joined my age mates to learn how to swim. In fact, no one taught me. I swim very well. I can swim. No matter how. No matter the depth of the, the, the stream or river, I can swim very well. And that, I used to go fishing. When I fish, I make, I, I catch fish, bring it home that serves, that we used to prepare our food in tell, the house. Tell, tell us a bit about your experience in secondary school. What was it like? Were you, were you bullied? Were you discriminated? Did you face any challenge in secondary school? Yes, the only challenge that allowed people to intimidate me. Mm -hmm. Once, once you do anything, I feel like, it shouldn't supposed to be done to that. It's not supposed to be done to any anybody. Uh -huh. I don't allow people. To, in fact, the thing to cut everything short is that I don't allow people to intimidate me. And uh, I, I, due to the fact where I was born, looks like a great Google is people from Google. Yes, they are rough. They are, rough, they are very strong. So that I, for me to have grown from a place like that, there is no place I will go now and uh, people like come and intimidate me. Like that. So I was very strong. 
one of the challenges I faced while in primary school was the fact that some people, when they, they maybe someone feels I have done something bad to him, for those who are heartless, they will go about taking this my stick to hide it somewhere. But once I find out, I had many friends while I was in primary school. My friends who they will first of all start looking for where the, where the person kept the stick. I will be they will be like checking. Once they find the stick, any person closer to that place, very close to the place that they, they found that stick. this stick, they will now go the person and call me. I will jump like this till I get to that point. Then from there, we will start asking that person, who came to this place, who kept this thing here? From there, we will ask the person, who, why, what is why you've been here? Who else came here? The person will talk. Then from there, we will start, like, we will uh, look. Uh -huh. Trying to find yes, out to who find, actually uh -huh. We will come to the door and then, if finally we will come catch the person, where he say with the suspense and he will do that kind of thing. So fight will start. I will beat that person, so they, yeah, and I'm going to fight, 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 fight. And I have all these tactics of fighting, like, I may carry sand, put it in my pocket. Once I dip my hand inside my pocket, you wouldn't know that there is sand inside, that I have sand in my pocket. Once I bring it out, you will think that I want to, like, punch you. Then, what the next thing you see is your face, wow. Once the sand enters your eye, I will lift you up, and I will beat you, beat you, beat you, beat you, beat you, beat you, beat you. So, with this, people started, like they stopped taking my stick from me. Like when I give it, like I had to yeah, so they, they began respecting me, considering the fact that once you do it, I have this heart that well, I will fight you to the core. I will fight you and I will fight you. So how about you, your university days? How was it like? Okay, good. Um, after my secondary education uh, in 2002, my dad, so I almost finished the same year with my. So I told my dad that I would want to go and serve someone in business. But I would want to go and serve someone in business. Considering our family background that we don't have money, maybe as to go into the university or something like that. So my dad said that no man, no body would accept me, considering my condition that I am physically challenged. And that I will not serve the person. Then you are supposed. What about it? if it comes to carrying heavy loads? So how will I be able to do it? So then we concluded in our family that my brother should go and serve. So he went there and maybe he had crash with the person he was serving and came back. So me myself, I took it upon myself, I called my brother in law, then talked to him, he said I should go and buy jam. I went and bought jam upon myself I bought jam wrote my jam to the glory of God my jam result was okay my result came out and was okay so well, what course did you apply for? I have uh, my course what I, I read in school is fisheries and agriculture yes I read fisheries and agriculture in school it's an agri course it's five years course in so from there I entered I was admitted into the university started becoming more difficult. Paying house rent, like my brother-in-law may give me money to take care of my house rent and uh, considering my condition, I can't pay for a house where water does not run. Yeah. So where water doesn't flow. So I, I will, the one, anything I collect from him, then I will try to add something to make sure that I pay for a better place where water flows, where water runs. So that's, I continue that way. Paying school fees, paying dues in school, paying so many things in school, taking care of myself, and uh, even my at times I used to uh, also help my my younger ones, even my friends also I used to help my some of my friends also. So that I continued doing. So it got to a point where things started becoming more difficult. So I engaged myself in farming business. 
So I went to one um, our neighboring village in Baluku. I rent. I used to rent land there, considering the fact that they have fertile soil. So I, will, I, I was farming rice and at times cassava there. So that. But what what made me stop the business was the fact that I used to borrow from meeting uh, the meeting that would rent to me would charge oh, high interest. interest uh, so that and the, almost all the work I pay for almost every work because I cannot I, I wasn't able to cast rice apply fertilizers and the other things I used to pay for almost all so after all I, I used to go home almost empty handed so I stopped the business then carried keke I began riding keke in Abakariki while I was in, still in my final year in the university I I went to acquire one skill like that. I applied uh, to to uh, I paid half of the money. Then the person charged me I think seventy thousand mm -hmm. uh, sewing. Mm -hmm. I went to rent tailoring. Yes. So the person charged me and I was able to pay half of the money. So when I went there, I only went for four days, and I used this my one leg to match my chain. So and it was recorded in that place that I was the best person there. The person that came the same day and they learned how to match mention, how to write mention the same day. So it's, it's, it's still a record that place with one leg. So, but at a point, I went for four days. I wasn't, money wasn't coming. So I stopped. Then brought my brother back from Lagos State where he, he was. Uh, he was staying with my, my elder sister. So I brought that my brother back, then put him there so that that money would not be the worst. And then my brother would also learn that uh, 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 got that skill, mm -hmm. so so that he would also get the skill. So parents we were also very much uh, supportive. They were supporting us. My parents are the best pa parents in the world. They are very, 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 very caring. Uh, my parents were really trying for us. So my dad had injury, which has disturbed him so much. Inhibiting him from doing some experience up to some places so that um, alone cost and that is is like eating so much money like we spend we spend a lot of money the money that we were supposed to to maybe be put in other things the injury you had that was when you were in school yes even while i was still in secondary school you had that injury yes even, what about now? it has not even gone totally so that injury has cost us so much money money that my dad was supposed to be spending on us, everything, everything has been going to that, uh, taking care of that injury. So that's, that has been it. And today, um, um, like I was say, telling you, I got, I, bo I brought Keke on a higher purchase in Abakarik. I was riding that Keke. So I will ride Keke and I will still go to class. Uh, so that made me to... How, how, are you, how are you able to balance it? Because you have morning classes and you are still doing this business. How are you able to do it? Yes, most times when I have morning class, I will attend class. Okay. Then I will work late night. I will work to the... At times I will work to the 3 o'clock night. Mm -hmm. So I will work to the 3 o'clock night. Till the time the team began, this my leg began taking me. So I had no option than to, to, to stop because the team stopped me very much. So I had no option than to stop. Then I, I dropped the, the ticket. Then I started thinking about how to order my life because no source of income again. No one gives me money. No one was giving me money again. So I, I then consulted some of my friends. Some were able to give me money uh, to run my final careers. So, to, though my brother in law had already uh, taken care of it, but due to the fact that I, I have so much challenges, mm -hmm. uh, so I have so many needs, my brother that was in Abakariki uh, still learning that mm -hmm. business and, and other things. At times, I will even give to my parents. So, it wasn't really easy for me. Taking care of yeah. other things, uh, many things I was taking okay. care of. Yeah. So can, we can only thank God for the success. Yes, yes, yes. We were able to finish. What what year did you graduate from school? 
the year. From the university. Yes, I think everything. I concluded everything in 2019. Yes, 2019. Today, Chijoke Njoku is not just a graduate, but an ex copper. Mm -hmm. So, why did you choose to serve? Why did you choose to enroll and become a core member? Yes, like I've said, um, I've not seen myself as one, um, though the fact remains that I have disability because it is physical. It's so what every, everyone sees. It's not hidden. But I have not, I have not seen myself as someone. I've not been able to like underrate myself, like trying to bring myself down. Yeah. So I've been seeing myself like what you yourself standing here can do. And can I also do it. And that's why you see me now. I can play football very well. I can play football. I can swim. I can ride motorcycle. Your one year service, has it added any value to your life? Can you really say that this one year you spent to yes, serve your family? Yes, of course. I would have. Uh, some some of my friends suggested that I should uh, apply for exemption. So, but I told them no. Every other person does it. I will do it. I want to do it. So I even camped. I went to camp in Bara State. So in Bara State I camped. Then I applied for relocation uh, for the deployment. I was deployed to Abuja here. Considering the fact that I want to learn a particular business, which is buying and selling of building plumbing materials. So I've been able to learn the business. And it's one of the things that the youth service has fetched me. While narrating his impact from the one-year compulsory service, Chijuke advised that the National Youth Service is what every graduate should partake in. Service is what every, every graduate should do. Yes, you should go and serve because you learn a lot. I, at least I've been able to build social links with men and women, with my fellow core members, many people from different states, different states of the country. At least when I when I'll be living now, I can I can call sit on the phone and say sit, 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 where are you? Uh, he will tell me, oh yeah, let's meet in Portacot. Yes, he's not from Ebony State, I'm from Ebony State. He's from not here. So you yourself inclusive. You are from Akwa State. If not this service, I wouldn't have met you. And you're a good person to me, you've been a good friend to me. So that is one of the things I've gained from the service. I'm happy that I, I am serving. That's a good one. So what was your Yes, my key word, what they should hold on to is disability is not a I got this, uh, it was this level of day, our, uh, our proprietor, my former school, my mother, my, my former school, uh, it's a Michael's College, Jumini Kisu. That Reverend Father, he, though he's now late, uh, he's of Abu, of the blessed memory. There was a day we were playing football. So I kicked the ball from the corner. From corner kick, I kicked the ball. No one touched that ball. The ball entered post from corner kick. Father ran into the field, then hugged me and was shouting, disability is not an ability, disability is not an ability. So that thing entered my brain. And I've been carrying that thing. I've been believing that disability is not an ability. That you are physically challenged doesn't mean that you are mentally challenged. You can think, you can reason, you are a rational being. You can think of how to create something, how to do this, how to do that. That is why I was in, in the university. I didn't relax. I was in school, puzzling, helping myself. I was still in school, then applied to acquire this uh, tailoring skill. Yes, I did it while I, was, while I was still in the university. So means that even if if I had continued, maybe by now, uh, at least I'll be, I can be able to feed myself with that tailoring uh, uh, business. So disability is not a... Uh, Inability, irrespective of the fact that this is a big challenge. Like you can walk with your bone legs. I cannot I cannot walk with my bone legs. Your hands, your both your palms are soft. My own palms are not soft. The stick I'm holding is giving me serious injury. So it's one of it's also a challenge. So when you see someone with uh, I'm talk, yes, like you said, I should talk to people with a disability. I know you guys are suffering, I know of course. And uh, I am sure if anything should happen that I will become the president of this country tomorrow, one of the first things I will fight is making sure that they, they have ministry. Mm -hmm. that, that is ministry 
for people with disabilities, like ministry of yeah, like we have a ministry of works, ministry, yes, and so I will make sure. And though I've asked, they say they, that the thing has been passed as bill. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but if I should be made the president of this country, it is one of the first things. One of the first things uh, I will do, making sure that they have minister. That they will be minister for that for people with a disability mm -hmm. to take care of them. When job comes, they will be able to like so, yeah, get yeah, job. Uh, so. There will be no discrimination. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I will take good care of it. If anything happens that I make it now big, I make it big, definitely I will, I will uh, the, the, the persons I think I should place first. Mm. I, will, I will consider them very much. Then my advice to them is, if you see yourself in this my condition, people, there are people who are, whose condition are worse than mine. And there are people that, that are better than me. I just met some woman one day. The man is very, very, very handsome. Very huge. But his own problem is that he has this problem of uh, uh, nose. He can't perceive anything in your order. No matter whether good or bad order, he cannot perceive any order. So it's a challenge. You know, you, no one knows except that he tells you. So, like he told me one day that something was burning inside the house and he didn't know. Someone told him to look after the food that, that he kept on the stove. Then he forgot and the thing was burning and he did not even know. So it's a challenge. We are facing a big challenge. So my advice to them is that let the challenge not weigh you down. Listen fine. Think about how to engage yourself meaningfully. Engage yourself somewhere. Engage yourself significantly. You will see yourself. At least you'll be able to to uh, make impact in the movement. And another thing is that you people, the words I'm talking to us, we should bless God first in anything we are doing. My my success today has been God. God has been with me. He has never I used to put him first, even when I'm entering bus, I pray to him, I pray to God, I believe God is my all and all. God first. Yes, they should place God first. Don't you ever believe that there is something you can, there's something you can do without this Aramaka. Yes. For without him, you are nothing. You are absolutely nothing. Someone like me that was not born into a rich family, and today, I can boldly say that, uh, and I'm saying it to the glory of God, uh, that I'm a graduate. A graduate, so I'm a graduate today, and to the glory of God, and I will always give thanks to God who made this become possible. possible. Thank you very much, to Jeffrey, for this interview. I believe all that you have said, people are listening to it and they are taking lessons. Actually, the last statement you made that disability is not inability. That yes. the fact that you are physically challenged does not mean that you are mentally challenged. It's a very good lesson and a very good advice to everyone out there. And honestly, you are a living testimony to so many people out there because when they see you and they see what you are doing in spite of the challenge, the fact that you are physically challenged, it will be a boost. You know, most times people want to see other people do it for them to want to do it. So thank you very much for this interview and for speaking your mind out and letting us know what to do. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. The sky, honestly, is your starting point. I appreciate you so much. Thank you so much. Thanks.